Is this working?
musical beneath the crisp, solitary blue light beam. And as an orchid show prosper in forest light darker, she faded from sight at the dimming of light when the ringmaster entered in spectacular splendor. No trace of her beauty or kind of a drooping thought when you think that you're maybe your shirt's falling off or maybe you're wearing that sweater and it's it's falling down the back of your arms and you just can't wait for the car to pull over at the next rest area but we're going to be here forever
Oh, wow. 
been swerving around just about knocking over blind people on the corner at 80 miles an hour. It's things that this, like this that just burn my anal nerve and I'm tired of it. So let's just drop it. Just take a long deep breath. And I don't know how to explain it but they poured her out of a bottle of maple syrup and they named her Jemima. And people ask me sometimes, they say, why do you and your pals, why do you have such a problem with identifying yourself in the darkness where only dreams and tales of woe exist? And I say, you just, you've said it all wrong. You don't understand. The title that you use to describe us, well, when we fall out of a bottle, we don't look like Jemima either. You gotta deal with it. And I'm saying like, when this is all finished, you'll just have to deal. That's the way I felt too. When I touched her lower vertebrae, oh, it made that kind of oozing sound. point to every point above that point, all the way up her back, from the base of her spine to her solar plexus, I could feel the molecular structure turning into diamonds that grew and exuded from the pores of her skin, and they produced light. As unbelievable as that may seem. That's it. That's it. I only still got about two minutes left. Oh, yeah. Hey, all right, here we go. Talk it, talk it now. Okay. Well, it's wrong. When you're trying to park your fucking car, boy. You don't know what you're doing, you fucking parallel-minded motherfucker. Learn how to fucking take it on into the cubicle there. There's the space you're supposed to keep your fucking soul inside there, little boy. I'll break your goddamn top of your mop fuck up there. Just stick it on a handle and start showing it all around town, you little uh, minute. You little, little minute, little sly time. I'm gonna take the little parts of your toes and I'm gonna clip them right off, skin and all. 
you're going to be in pain. I got some of that hydrogen peroxide I'm going to pour all over the inside of the internal part of your nose cap. And I'm going to cut the little tip off the schnag in there too. And then I'm going to play a little bit of catch with it right on in the side of my ear. And then I'm going to listen to the little hairs bristling as it's decapitated small little ass is rolling around inside of my ears cleaning up my wax. And then I'm going to spit it back out and cram it right down your throat so it can just, just mingle with the best merging little mucous membranes down there in your fucking vinegar oil fucking stomach. And that's gonna be about it for you. And that's just me being real nice. Cause I like you. I love your ass. I love your ass, little minute. Little tiny, minute, finite little box compartment. I'm gonna throw you on the fucking A train and send you right up there to fucking Jaime Town, boy. We're gonna show you what it's all about. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna put you away in a little box little box and we're gonna park you right out into this fucking tail on end of a fucking elephant and watch that dung splatter all around your life. It's just the shroud surrounding your personality anyway, that elephant shit mess coming all around your ass, boy. I'm being real nice to you. I love you. That's just cause I fucking love you, boy. Just cause I fucking love you. Well, over and out, bitch. puppets going down. Oh yeah. When she comes to me, she looks so sweet and I saw her on the street then I grabbed her purse and took her, her eyeball and put it in a compact. Oh, oh, oh. When I put that washing detergent on her face and I spread it thinly. I was running the Oakland days with my good buddy Charlie Finley. Oh, it went all those dogs and trails spilled out and from the curb into the street. I knew my sweater puppet baby was my kind of meat. Oh, I... Oh, 
Hi, how are you? I want you to meet my friend, the eye care specialist. Now, what about closet. bringing a couple Hello, extra I, instruments down here? I used to be a rubbish collector. I collected <laughs> pianos and strange enema bags back in Portland with some of my friends who are doing heroin. I've got some cat fuzz that I'd like to trade you for. So when we're jamming, we oh, an old Perry Como record. Perry really never... You could never tell when Perry was going to sing. When the orchestra started up, and you could never tell when the singing actually came in and where Perry's lousy voice began or the music ended. But it was a strange collection of people that were hanging around with Rod Steiger and Charlton Heston. Nevada up by Winnemucca. And we used to go into Reno for the weekend. All blue-haired ladies serving whiskey at the bar. Ballet people parking old big old Lincoln automobiles. Yeah. I still remember saying I wouldn't know how to leave this town if you had let me out in a team of 12 oxen moving poisonous toxins. I know a guy that's got some stolen marsupials and a blossom farm down in Zurich who likes to hang around spitting gondola vice, crime, vice, all kinds of harness. Horses and carriages, strange witch covered bananas. Out of these, uh, right out of the side of the white phlegm that drips from old people's teeth. Yeah. Yep. Really, Agnes Morehead ain't got nothing on that guy. I've seen her. She looks a little bit like a puppet that I used to carry around in my pocket when I go from town to town, you know, from Gramada to Coromolinos in the south sport of, of Grandma's Spain collection with my orca people coming up for the holidays, thinking that there was a lot going on in Marbella back then. Just get down to Algeciras and take that boat over there, huh? And then, you know, we'll go into Tetuan and them how to play saxophone down there, yeah, those bastards, they can't tell the difference between good music and jazz music, you know, it's, they listen to one thing and they think it's, it's, it's just kind of all fucked up sound and it's good, I can appreciate that since, you know, somebody from over there loves air supply, you know, air supply sucks, right, but no, not to them, you know, it's different and it's exciting. The same about good work too. Sold that for about $7.99. Certain uh, Progo cassette.
know it doesn't make sense, but there was this girl, and she had a berserk skill. And I, I rode with her, I followed her for about two or three weeks, and I just couldn't keep up with her. It was, it was entirely unnecessary, but I did it anyway. Service this evening, I'd like to call on my friend 
Richard Radabone over there on the other organ. I want you to listen to Richard Radabone play a hymn. One of the finest hymns ever written. It was written by the Crusaders back in the year 1423. And it was called Praise Be to My Naked God. That's right. And I want you to visualize, people, your naked God, whether she's got large breasts or a massive preapic penis that just drills through the tray that you put your money in. Richard, take it away. Thank you, Jimmy. <laughs>
Thank you.